we're going to check verse 1 of Mark 4. So it says, again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and set in it out on the lake where all the people were doing, where all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. So how many can understand why Jesus spoke in parables to help people understand the deeper truth, right? So that what is in the natural is corresponding in the, in the spirit realm. So how many understand that if seed by a farmer is sown on a path, a dirt path where people are walking, that that seed is not going to go into the ground? How many can see that? Just raise your hand if you get that. <laughs> understand that the seed that falls on the hard ground is not... How many farmers are here? How many farmers are here? <laughs> how many know a little bit about farming? Raise your hand. About gardening. About gardening. Okay. So uh, on, the, on the hard path, when the seed, if the farmer sows and it scatters onto that hard path, what's, what, what's a bird going to do? The birds are just going to come and take it, aren't they? So then, if there's rocky soil that the seed scatters to, uh, beyond the path, uh, there's rocky soil with a little bit of soil at the top. Uh, how many know that the seed can't really grow because it can't produce roots? Right, how many can see that? So as verse 4, as he scattered the seed, verse 5, some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. So let me say that makes total sense. Amen. In, yes. the, in the natural realm. Uh, but verse 7 says, other seed fell among thorns, which grew up, and, and so the it produced roots, but when the plant began to grow, uh, the thorns choked the plants, so they could not bear grain. And so there's three kinds of soil that are presented to us here. And the fourth kind of soil is good soil. And so when the seed hit the, hit the ground and uh, Pretty soon, it roots began to grow, and the plant begins to grow, and it grows and produces a crop 30, 60, or even 100 times the amount of seed that was sown. Amen. How many say that God has put into nature supernatural things? Yes, he has. Amen. If we just obey the laws of nature, there are some supernatural things that happen. Yes. And so then I want us to go down to verse 14 because he's explaining how this fits with um, people. Amen. In, spiritually in our lives. So, and so he says, verse 14, 
and he's, let's say that he's talking about himself and all this crowd of people. He said the farmer, he's likening himself to a farmer, sows the word. So he speaks the word, and some people that hear the word are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, who comes and takes away the word? Satan. The devil. Satan. Not, instead of birds, it's Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Then others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word, and at once they receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. So when trouble or persecution comes, because of the word, they quickly fall away. Verse 18. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things, uh, and Luke, it says, for different pleasures, comes in and chokes the word, making it unfruitful. Again, others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. 30, 60, or even 100 times what was sown. Praise God. So what is nat in the natural realm explained is, is um, also in the spirit realm. Amen. Amen? So of all the people that hear the word, the majority of them, the soil, the, how many know the problem is not the word? Can you say that? The problem is not the word. The problem is not, not the word. word. The problem is the hearts of people. How many can understand that? That's the ground where the seed goes in. Into the person. And so the majority of people that hear the word of God do not produce because their heart, the ground of their heart is not good. So we're going to understand that today, understand what that means. So when we hear that the ground is good, good ground, it means that their hearts have been prepared. How many know that when you want to grow uh, anything, you want to prepare the soil? Right. How many understand that, that it needs to be plowed up? Amen? Amen. And um, maybe whatever is not in there that's good, taken out. But in order to get any crop in the natural realm, you have to prepare the soil. Right. Amen? So uh, the soil has to be broken up. The soil has to be plowed so that the, the, so the heart has to be ready. Amen? Right. The heart has to be able to receive the Word of God. Amen. So the Amen. way that hearts receive, become good soil, is when they have holy fear in their lives. How many know people go along for a long time and they're just not even afraid of, of anything? Uh, they're not afraid of what's going to happen to them when they die. They're not thinking about what the future holds for them. Um, they're not afraid of God in the right way. They don't have holy fear of God. And sometimes people will hear a message and come to the altar and, and say they're getting right with God, but then they just go back and nothing really happens. So all of these different kinds of soil that is not good, that their lives don't produce. Because the soil of their heart wasn't prepared. Yes. And the way the soil of our heart is prepared is when we have awakenings. When people have awakenings to who God is, and the danger that they're in. Right. How many know people have to know the danger that they're in? And it can happen through different incidents that happen. It can happen through a near-death experience. It can happen through uh, extreme uh, severe sickness. We've been hearing calls of people that have had COVID and that they want to come to church for a while. They make a vow to God that if God, if they will be able to get well, they'll come to church. And we had a lady that was coming for a while. And she had been awakened to her need. She came for a while and she has 
not come back. So she, her, the soul of her heart never became prepared fully. So um, all kinds of things happen to, for us to have a holy fear of God, which prepares the soil of our heart for the word of God to come to Christ. Amen? Amen. So many can say, well, sometimes it's good to pray for people to yes. have these kind of crises That's in right. their life. Mm -hmm. We're doing them a favor. We're doing people a favor. When we pray for them to have a crisis that wakes them up to the state that they're in, that if they were to die in that state, they would not go to heaven. At the same time that crises come, they need to have the conviction of the Holy Spirit working in them. The Holy Spirit convicts sinners of, of sin and guilt and, uh, and what true righteousness is and the judgment to come. So praise God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Well, we wouldn't be able to have anyone get saved if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit right. working right. in the heart. Only the Holy Spirit can work in the heart. Right. We want to help people. Uh, we're limited. And unless we are instruments of the Holy Spirit to help them understand the need of the situation they're in, uh, they cannot be saved. So it, the heart has to be prepared with holy fear and conviction of the Holy Spirit to help a person see that the need they're in. To see the trouble that they're in. Amen. 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 How many know you can go a long time away from God and think no big deal? Right. Think no big deal. Yes. Can we move you two guys one up, one seat apart there? Amen. How, how many see that people can go a very long time? <laughs> Going along, how many said that happened to me? Yeah. I went on a very long time. People can, yeah. no, no big deal. I'm not worried. I'm not concerned. Right. Maybe you've even had multiple crises. Well, I don't know what it's going to take. What do y'all think? What kind of a crisis is it going to take to see your need for God? How many understand? It could be a pretty big thing. Or it may be too late. True. It may be that God has worked and worked and worked and worked and still nothing has come. And so we don't know when God's going to say enough is enough. Right. It's not, it's not because he doesn't love, I tell you. Right. It's, it's that people can shake their fist at God only so long. Right. And then God will say at some point enough is enough. So we have to have holy fear. We have to have holy fear. Come on. The soul of our heart has to get right. Amen. Get right. ready. Amen. Soul of, soil of our heart has to be plowed up. Praise God. Right, right. Praise God. I know the soil of my heart was plowed up. I know it was. Because I felt extreme conviction. Amen. I felt, I felt extreme danger. I felt, I felt extreme fear. See, when, when the soil of your heart, if you're a sinner, when the soil of your heart is plowed up right, you will be very anxious for your soul. Right. Amen. You will be very anxious for your soul. Amen. It's called, you're called an awakened sinner. Yes. An awakened sinner who's very anxious for the state that they're in. Yes. Yes. And it actually gets to the place where there's so much fear, the only place you can turn is to Jesus. Yes. Come on, how many understand? Yes. There's so much fear. Yes. Right. There's so much dread. There's so much concern. But there is one place you can turn. Amen. Praise God. Right. Amen. There right. is one place, and only one place, and that is to the holy love of God. If we have holy fear of God, we can see our need for Him. And we can have holy, holy fear of Him that He is holy love. Amen? Right. That yes, we would have to stand before Him. And not be able to hear Him say, well done, good and faithful servant. 
So we, we have to have holy fear. But when you're, when you're cornered, when you're in a tight place, spiritually, in fear, anyone can call from that place. Call on the name of the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Amen. It yes. doesn't matter how far, how long you've gone in the direction you've been going. Right. If your soul of your heart gets ready, Amen. Do you know that it does? A person may have never heard of Jesus before, may never have heard, known the gospel, but when they get under that kind of conviction, automatically the Holy Spirit, or whatever little knowledge we had, there is a way. God. There is a way. Yes. That truth has been broadcast all over the world through believers, through through the Holy Spirit's work. So that when a person comes to the realization, I'm lost and I'm hopeless and I have nowhere to turn. Right. I have nowhere to turn. Amen? Amen. Amen. Every sinner must get to that place. Right. Every That's sinner true. must have the soil of their heart true. plowed up. That's right. Amen? Yes. And it takes crises. Yes. It, it may take near, near death may take more than one near-death experience. I mean, some people's hearts are very hard. The soil of their heart is very hard. It may take three near-death experiences. How many understand? How many understand? That's right. How sad. How sad uh, that anyone gets, their heart gets that hard. Right. What, what, what you've done to make your heart that hard is you've said no so many times. You've said no to God so many times. Right. You've gone back to sin so many times. 